start out? You want to start? I'll start. Uh, or we can continue with the music. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare, episode 13. I'm your host, James Walter, and with me, as always, Mr. Chris Garcia. Chris Garcia. Chris Garcia for unlucky number 13. Or as I like to call it, lucky number 13. As I also like to t- call it, my favorite number. Also, Taylor Swift's favorite number. Oh my gosh. Also, her birthday. Oh my gosh. Is it today? No, in December. December 13th? December 13th is Taylor Swift's birthday. So don't forget it. I don't. I don't know. Okay, anyway. It's also another important day. It's also my anniversary. <laughs> it's also my anniversary. So that's important. So lots of good stuff on December 13th yeah. going down. Lucky number, my anniversary, Taylor Swift's birthday. Got him in the right order that time, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So did you have a good week? I did. Good. It actually went by fast. This, this week, week went by a lot faster than last week did. Last week I felt like we were waiting it was just well. dragging on. And this week we're here recording. I feel great. How do you feel? I feel great. It's nice and warm. It's not overbearingly hot. No, too, Not too overbearingly cold. There's like no humidity. So it's like that perfect Beautiful. time in the southeast. When you say that, right? We're in the southeast. It's going to be temporary. And then it'll last for about a month. And then the humidity will kick in. And uh, the people in Alabama have the worst. And uh, the rest of us get it pretty bad. The mosquitoes come out. Yes. The uh, southwest begins to look really appealing with that zero humidity and 110 degrees. I would rather have that. I don't know. I kind of like having all four seasons. So, you know, you get what you can get. When I went to Arizona in December, it was like 40 degrees. Yeah, they do get cold in Arizona. It's like desert, you know, hot yeah. cold. They, they, they miss out on fall, though, is my yeah, thing. True. I like the fall. So. The cactuses do not change colors. No, they just are green and prickly. And stiff. They are green, right? Yes. That's not just like a cartoon thing. No, they're, they're green. I thought so. That's, that's the weekly flare keeping you informed on the color of cacti. What else should we keep them informed on, Chris? Well... No, 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 we got a great story today. Why don't you start us out? Well, I picked these out myself, didn't I? You did pick so these out. So I gotta out. make sure I get these right. Get them right. Let's see here. We got Quincy, Massachusetts. The Massachusetts governor, Charlie Baker, got a sharp new short haircut on Tuesday to, that helped raise money for charity and met the approval of his wife. Wow. Two birds, one stone. Definitely. Would you cut your hair bald if uh, Rachel liked it? Well, she would not like it. She actually would prefer it longer than it is. Longer than it was before I cut it. Did I cut it before we started podcasting? I don't think I did. I, don't think, you I did. think it was after we started. Your she hair, likes it long. Your hair grows grow, grow short? Or is it grow like a... takes a long time to grow? Uh, no, it grows okay. faster than I would like. Okay. But slower than Rachel would like. I gotta so get a haircut about It's probably long. a good speed. I got that specialized haircut. You got that special hair. So. See, uh... Alright, so how much money did they raise? Who did they raise it for first? Let's see. They, uh... The governor... Most of his gray lawn locks shorn off as part of a Savings by Shavings fundraiser drive that benefited the Dana-Farber Cancer Institution in Boston. What did they research at that cancer institution? Uh, let's see. What let's kind see. of cancer is it? Let's just see. general cancer? I think it's just... Yeah. GC? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the event has spearheaded by Granite Telecommunications in Quincy. Baker was joined by Quincy's mayor, Thomas Coach. Coke? Coke? How's it spelled? K-O-C-H? I think it's Coke. K-O-C-H. Koch. Koch? I don't know. And it's about, Koch. We decided. Well, Koch? We'll say Koch. Let us know if we're wrong, <clears throat> Koch. Uh, 500 company employees also who had their uh, hair cut. The event is expected to raise $3.25 million for cancer research. A lot of zeros. That is a lot. See here, the drive began last year when the company, including CEO Rob Hale, donated more than $2.2 million to Dana-Farber after 428 granite employees shaved their heads or beards. I couldn't do that. You can't shave your beard? No, I wouldn't. Why? It's so short. Look, I didn't even shave this week. I'm all, like, scrubby. (laughs) 
my hair, my beard is about seven eighths long, seven eight, seven eighths inches long. Mine's keep, uh, keep growing, visible, visible, peach fuzz. Just two weeks earlier, Hale has dared an employee to shave his ZZ Top style beard in exchange for ten thousand dollar donation to Dana Farber. The employee accepted the dare. So wow. That's yeah. a lot of money raised for we're, cancer research. We're raising a lot of money for cancer research. A lot of cancer is getting uncancered. Removed? Removed. Removed. Killed? Is cancer cells alive? Yeah. Are well, cancer cells alive? Man, my grandma's bad today. Yeah. <laughs> Can't speak. Well, I mean, it wasn't completely bald, as you see. It was like a oh, buzz, just cut. buzz So it in. wasn't too bad. That's you know, it's good. nothing drastic, you know. It wasn't, you know, and it's a better haircut than what he had before. You know, he had his. Longer. Yeah, it is old man comb over. Yeah, o old man comb over. He has more of a buzz cut, which actually looks a lot better for him, I think. Probably looks more professional. More old man, not middle-aged crisis. Definitely. You should, you should cut your hair. My hair will <clears throat> be non-existent by the time I'm that old, if um, genetics are any indication. So I won't have to worry about that. I'll have just the no hair thing going on. Oh, right. Sorry, that in turn. We've got another one. Nothing to do with hair. No hair. Well, unless you want to say aliens have no hair. Do aliens have hair? Oh my gosh, yes. They. I don't know. Have you seen hair? By the, the old musical? I don't know. Oh. Hairspray. Hairspray. I've seen hairspray a long You've time seen ago. Hairspray, okay. This so thing, what are we talking about aliens? Well, the... Your chrome crashed, so I'm trying no, to... No, chrome! I've got to restore this real quick. Hopefully uh, it restores all the tabs. I really hope it does. All gone. I got it. Okay, good. Yeah, sorry for the delay. Oh, technical <clears throat> difficulties there. We'll, we'll cut that. to seven. It's episode 13. Wow. <laughs> we got NASA's chief scientist, Ellen Stofan, predicts we'll find sign of alien life within 10 years. Was she looking in the mirror? <laughs> Well, she's not that ugly. No. <laughs> okay. NASA's top scientist predicts that we will find signs of alien life by 2025. What do you say 2025? 2025. An saying, alien odyssey. Copyright. That's... Weekly for 2015. We will have extra stronger evidence for extraterrestrials in the years that follow. I don't understand how they can predict this. Well, I think what they're saying is that they know... That they have, they know how to look, and they know where to look. No, they know how to look, and they have the technology to look. They just don't know where to look. Was that what she said? I think so. Let's see here. Um, we think we're going to have definite evidence within 20 to 30 years. Wait, so that's not by 2025 then? Definite. She might say we might be close in 2025. Even stronger evidence. She says even so stronger. So in 2025, they'll be like, hey, that rock might be an alien floating through space. Exactly. And then in 10 more years, they'll be like, no, that definitely was a rock. Oh, no, I mean, that definitely was an alien. Yes. Because that's what they think is going to happen. We're not talking about little green men. We are talking about little microbes. So what's a microbe, James? Oh, a microbe. She's talking about just, like, little, like, organisms. Oh. So it's like, like uh... It could just be some, like, you know, space junk with, like, some bacteria still alive on it. Okay. It's closer than we, we can expect. Not aliens, just the organisms. When we do find evidence of life, however, it's likely it won't be signs of alien civilization, but rather something much, much smaller. Yeah, like so, something we put in space. This story is a, is a catcher. It shows you, hey, why don't you read the story because we might find aliens. We might find aliens. AKA yeah. bacteria that we probably sent to space. That's what I think. Well, this story is a fluke. Do you think there's aliens? Not to put you on the spot here with all the crazies, but I couldn't tell you. I, I, I'm going to go unanswered on that one. Unanswered. Plausible. Yes, plausible. Plausible. I'm going plausible, but unlikely. Yeah. Now, so we're on the same page here. Same page. Plausible, but unlikely. Now, if we do find alien life forms somewhere, do you think that this program will be shut down immediately without any recognition of someone saying anything about alien life forms by the government? 
I think it depends on, nope, definitely going to be out in the open because Twitter and Facebook and YouTube so and like, these new apps called Meerkat and Periscope that allow you to live stream right to Twitter and that they're going to be big and that kind of thing is just going to continue to grow. Even though people have said in the past, like, hey, I was on an alien. Yes. So you notice now that people have smartphones and stuff, yes. there's not as many reports of people being abducted by yes. aliens because somebody it's would have documented proof. it. Mm -hmm. Because even when people are drunk, they still are, somehow are able to get out their phones and record uh, the dumb things that they are doing. So I feel like if an alien did abduct them, somebody would have got that on camera somewhere. Hence why the reports of alien activity have decreased. Except for places where they don't have technology that, that's readily available. So, so I think if we find alien life, it'll be blown up before they have a chance to conceal it. So you're not, you don't like UFO hunters? You don't think that's real? I think it's hilarious. I'm not saying it's not real. I think they're definitely hunting for UFOs. Hmm. I'm just not sure. I'm not convinced that they've actually found anything from outer space. Kind of like pro wrestling. Exactly. All comes full circle. Exactly like pro wrestling. It's real, but it's fake. It's real, but it's also not real. You know what it is real, though? What's that? Star Wars. I would hope so. Star Wars is a real thing. Where would the world be without Star Wars? Um, well, it's hard to say because movie-wise, they were a big influence on movies as far as special effects and just the way the story was told. And now you can finally, starting on Friday, April 10th, that's Friday, right? Yeah. Yes. Friday, April 10th, which will be tomorrow when you're listening to, well, when we upload this, but probably today if you're listening to it, or sometime last week or whenever April 10th occurred in 2015 for you, you can download the whole Star Wars digital movie collection. Now, Star Wars has been released in theaters. Mm -hmm. Then it was released on Laserdisc and VHS. Yes. And then in 1997, it was re-released as a special edition with some additions. Uh, they didn't take away anything, just added some scenes, cleaned up some special effects, and there's some debate about changing some scenes as far as if Han shot first or Greedo shot first. Uh, the official word from Lucasfilm was that they didn't actually change the timing of the scene, they just cleaned it up so that it's more clear that they both maybe shot at the same time. It's kind of there like, hey, we don't want to upset anyone, but most of the internet still thinks Han yeah. shot first. But anyways, then in, um, after The Phantom Menace came out and Attack of the Clones came out, there was an original trilogy DVD box set that um, it was a box set, I believe, that cleaned, that he added some stuff, took away some stuff. That's when he really started changing stuff. I think if he just on the 97 special edition left it at that, no more changes. The pawn shop first thing would carry on because it's, it's funny mostly, but this outrage of him changing everything would probably have stopped, not have happened. DVD releases is when I felt like he really started changing things that really made people upset. That, with the internet still being relatively new as far as how fast information would spread, really caused it to get out of hand with him changing stuff. And then after um, Revenge of the Sith came out, um, then he put them all on Blu-rays after that. Um, the prequel trilogy stayed the same because he already did everything he wanted to do. But the original trilogy saw even more changes that were just ridiculous. And now the internet's really upset with them. They really, well, with George Lucas, um, who no longer owns Star Wars. So Disney now owns Star Wars, and they're going to release a digital movie collection, all HD, available all over the place in 10 different locations. Um, I believe what I heard is that it's the special editions of the original trilogy, which would be the 97 VHS release. But I couldn't find it a, a for sure, like, this is definitely the release. It just said the special edition, DV, uh, digital HD releases. So I'll find out on April 10th, and depending on if that's a yes or no, it will depend on if I buy them. Because the 97 edition is actually my favorite, 
And I would buy those on digital because I think they would look really nice and cleaned up version. What do the Blu-ray, for the Blu-ray edition that you have? The Blu-ray edition that I have, which I believe is what you watched. What you yes, had. I saw the special that I've never have seen before, which is absolutely amazing. Oh, what, what looks great. Is that the original or is that the 97 Blu-ray edition? Or what is The that? Blu-ray edition is its own edition. It was a, um, additionally altered scenes, the biggest which have been um, the, the conversation between Palpatine and Darth Vader and, and Empire, where he's like, Luke's your son. Basically, that whole conversation is completely different than it was in the original release or the 97 edition okay. release. Um, Jedi has even more changes where Darth Vader like screams no when he goes and picks up Palpatine to throw him down the shaft. And the worst change of all, in my opinion, even worse than him yelling no, is at the end scene when Luke's standing there at the party, the celebration on Endor. He looks over and he sees Yoda and Obi-Wan and oh no, Hayden Christensen. Hmm. Instead of the old guy that used to be standing yes. there. Personally, that to me is the worst change. Because Yoda's still old. Obi-Wan's still, still old. Darth Vader turned back to the light side before he died, so he should still be the old man. Oh, man. That's just how I feel about it. Let us know what you think. Send us a tweet or a Facebook or an email. We're tagging Star Wars on this one, so we're going to get a lot that's of right. mail coming in. Hashtag that. Star Wars. So, that's cool, but there's also going to be other interviews, behind the scenes kind of stuff. You think you're going to add in more? You're going to add in more no, than one this is Luke. just cleaning up um, in an HD version, basically. So, they're just going to take the film, convert it over to an HD release. Um, that's why I'm kind of hoping it's the 97 Special Editions, because the VHS, for mine, is starting to look really rough. Yeah. Just because the VHS degrades over time. So I really like a digital version of it that's uh, cleaned up and looks really clean. I think that would be the best version to have people watch for the mm. first time, honestly. You can still buy all six and movies then, at FYE for about $100. Yes, so this bundle, if you buy the whole bundle, I believe is $90. Although they haven't confirmed the pricing for sure, but that's what's listed on Amazon. Or you can buy them each individually for $20. And they include special features, um, never-before-seen stuff, interviews. Um, some of it's previously released in other bundles. Some of it's all brand new. Um, there's deleted scenes. So a lot of goodies. Um, I probably, if it's the 97 special editions, I'll pick it up because that's the only version I don't have digital. If it's not, I'll probably pass because I have all the other versions, including the original theatrical releases in a digital format on DVD that was released for a very short time that a lot of people don't know existed, apparently. Do you have a lot of Star Wars memorabilia? Um, I have a decent amount. None of it's up here except for my Darth Malgus, which they probably can't see in the camera that well. But I have a decent amount of other stuff. Let, let I have me, a lot of Legos that are Star Wars. Let me ask you this. Have you seen the poster that was released? I do have a lot of posters that are Star Wars. The only thing I think I want from Star Wars memorabilia is when uh, Luke has a red lightsaber. Oh, the favorite. original poster for original Jedi. One. Yes. When it was called Revenge of the Jedi. Yes. Before he changed it. Yes. yes that is a pretty cool poster. It's, is it expensive though? Uh... Well, they didn't print any for actual retail, so yeah, if you can find one, I believe it's pretty, it's pretty, well, we can look it up. Um, I believe that th those weren't ever actually released at all for the public mm. anywhere. I think I've seen a couple on TV and stuff, trying to sell them at pawn shops and stuff. But, <laughs> I think it's um, a pretty cool piece. It was a very cool poster, and I kind of think Revenge of the Jedi was a cool title. But um, Was that the last one? It was the original title for Return of the Jedi. And then he said, well, Jedi wouldn't really have revenge no. because that's not, you know, that's, that's, not, the, that's, that's not the, the idea. So, yeah, here's one on eBay for... Oh, if it's Revenge of the Jedi... It said $10. If it's Revenge of the Jedi, don't you think it was... Well, that's probably not an original print. Oh, here's one for $1,000. Okay. Here's one for $675. Well... I'm curious to know why it's called Revenge or Return of the Jedi, but it has Darth Vader's big so head. So the idea was Darth Vader turning on the Empire, on the Emperor, rather, and coming back to the light side. 
So George Lucas's original thing was Revenge of the Jedi because he was getting his revenge on Palpatine for basically manipulating him for the last 30 years. So that means that Darth Vader is now a Jedi. So Darth Vader is a Jedi again. Yeah. Okay. And then they thought, well, and George Lucas said this in an interview I have on um, one of my DVD collections or VHS collections or something I saw. I think it was on one of those. And he said basically that Jedi don't, revenge isn't a Jedi characteristic no. basically. So he called it Return of the Jedi. Change the box. So or, I was always you know, the all impression that, that Luke came back from where he was to right. But it can so be it's kind of place. a double thing now, gotcha. right? Because now he comes, he's come back now from the events of Empire, uh, and then at the end it comes full circle, ending the whole Skywalker saga. Which in December we may or may not see more Skywalkers. We'll see what happens. I mean, Luke's definitely confirmed in the movie. There's pictures of Mark Hamill with the Jedi beard. He says it kind of drives him crazy, but he's cool because he, he really likes the part. It kind of made him something. And he had a good career after that, doing voice acting, oddly enough. Good. Joker on Batman Animated Series was Mark Hamill. The best Joker voice, in my opinion. All right, we got, got a lot of going on. So one more thing real quick before we break. Chris, did your cell phone battery die a lot? <laughs> Too much. Too much. I keep it on the charger. How long does it take when you have to plug it back into charge? Mm, from zero to 100? From zero to 100. Two hours, maybe? Two hours. What if I told you Stanford University says they could charge your phone in a minute? Well, Stanford can take my money right now. Okay, what if I told you there is a thing called an aluminum ion <laughs> battery that is safer than your lithium ion batteries, meaning that they're not going to catch on fire? Whether by themselves from overheating or if you drill a hole in the middle of them. They um, can go for about 7,500 cycles without losing any capacity. Which um, previous aluminum batteries at other laboratories only had 100 discharge cycles. Um, and then they were completely dead. This aluminum ion one um, was able to go 7,500 cycles before it, it lost uh, any capacity any loss of capacity mm -hmm. so I assume that means with any and without any noticeable degradation which means it could even go in further before you need to replace your battery um, and he said that he could charge it in about a minute that's gonna revolutionize airports malls yeah you can start charging people charge your phone um, everything has batteries I mean our computer that it's plugged in, has batteries. I should have unplugged it because now we're probably gonna have a little bit of an electronic hiss in the background, but that's okay. Our tablet has batteries, my watch has batteries, our phones have batteries, our camera has batteries. Don't you wish your dog had a battery? <laughs> I'm not gonna comment on that. <laughs> um, batteries are a big part of modern life. Cars have batteries, airplanes have batteries, batteries have batteries, batteries have backup batteries. It never ends. And now, um, we can store energy more efficiently with aluminum ion, because aluminum's awesome. Which I like aluminum. Aluminum's expensive. Aluminum is great. It is expensive. Um, millions of consumers use one and a half volt AA and AAA batteries. Um, I know I use lots of AA batteries. I'm sure everyone else agrees. Yes. This our rechargeable aluminum battery generates about two volts of electricity. That's higher than anyone's achieved with aluminum. So they can already replace AA batteries. It says it produces half the voltage of a typical lithium battery, but they think they can improve that um, to get a battery that's inexpensive, safe, high speed charging, flexible, and long life cycles. It's still in the early days, but um, man, it's pretty promising. It will revolutionize a lot of things. It will revolutionize a lot of things for sure. And I'm excited. And I've, I've always thought that battery technology has been at a standstill for the last oh, forever. Yeah. Um, technology as a whole has grown exponentially over the last two decades, I'd say, easily. Um, but batteries really haven't seen any improvement, noticeable improvement during that time. Um, my GoPro, the battery in that, gets maybe two hours on a two, two, three hours maybe. 
Um, this company, Lime Fuel, makes a bigger battery that can go eight hours, but the battery is over twice the size. Yeah. It requires a special case. And Lime Fuel, by the way, makes a ton of sweet batteries. But, um, but yeah, so battery technology has been at a real standstill. And uh, it's good to finally see someone say, okay, well, lithium ion is at pretty much the best it can be. Let's make them out of aluminum. And uh, I'm all for that. Definitely. I love, I love things that take something and say, hey, how can we use this to replace this old technology? Because that's what makes the world go mm. round. So I'm excited. Are you excited? All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk 3D printers. We're going to talk the slight amoeba news that's happened since last week. And we're going to play a game of Would You Rather. So don't click away. We'll be back. Welcome back, everybody, to the Weekly Flare. We're glad you returned. We were getting worried that you weren't going to come back. Okay, well, I was getting worried. Chris is just staring at me creepily. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so we talk a lot about 3D printers on this show. Oh, too much. We love 3D printed objects, whether they're hands, our legs, so our... These need to be 3D printed. Those are actually, most of those are all hand painted apparently, which is why they take so long to make. Um, the Mario, the Super Mario Brothers series are uh, not, I don't believe, I believe just the Smash Brothers ones were. Gold Mario. That's a different story. Oh. No, I didn't get any more Amiibo this week. No. No one feeling today. Um, but we do have a sweet 3D printer on Kickstarter that's $180. It's simple, accessible, and it's dependable. Three things that 3D printers are not known for. <laughs> 3D printers are known for being awesome, big, small, cumbersome, uh, sensitive, not like the emotional kind, but like the, if you touch them, they fall apart kind. This one, the Tico, the Unibody 3D printer by Tico 3D, is on Kickstarter. Has 21 days to go. They had a goal of $100,000 and they made $1.2 million so far. They are in Niagara Falls, New York, and they have the, uh, I will say the best 3D printer I've ever seen. Um, but for the price, it's the best bang for your buck. Definitely. I think it's a better deal than the MakerBot. Better deal than the MakerBot 2. Um, it's featured in a lot of tech articles, Yahoo Finance, a lot of 3D articles. Um, this thing is small. It's about 15 inches tall. It's about 10 inches wide and about 8.5 to 9 inches deep. Um, but the print volume is what's impressive, though. It can print 138.3 cubic inches. So that's about like a 6 by 5-ish area. That's yeah, probably about like th 4 inches tall, maybe. 4 or 5 inches tall. Um, that's pretty impressive for $180. Um, it's a one... It's a unibody design, so it's firm. You can't put it together wrong. Basically, you have the frame. Um, everything is kind of a triangle shape, a delta shape, I guess is what they call it. So you can snap it together, put everything in. It basically can only go in the, that one way. But since it's a unibody frame, um, it keeps their cost down. It makes it a lot easier to assemble. This thing um, is pretty accurate. Um, this picture that they have on here is at 200 microns, but it can go as fine as 50 microns, which is very fine. Mm -hmm. 50 microns. So it's, it's pretty um, high precision, which is important for 3D printers, even if you're just doing them as a hobby, because then you can really get some fine details. Um, since it's a uniframe design, it's all enclosed. Um, it's not sensitive to wind, which is a good thing because a lot of 3D printers of the similar size have a real bad problem with wind blows on. Sensitivity. It messes up the printing and it's it's just not good. Um, this thing also doesn't use proprietary um, filament. So you can just get the standard, um, what is it, 1.75 millimeter filaments 
the big old rolls, drop them on in there, it'll print, it knows when it's going to run out, it'll stop, so you can put another spool in, and it'll keep printing. Um, this thing, it's wireless, so it's got um, Wi-Fi, so you can send your prints to it directly. It's, I mean, they say they use the browser-based software super friendly. I can't comment on that because yeah. I haven't used it. But they're doing it on a Mac, so uh, that's impressive on its own because doing modeling on a Mac isn't really, you know, a normal thing. And then they get into a lot of really technical details about it being strong. This guy's like sitting on top of it. It's light. They're like carrying it around and tossing it. Then they talk about how they did it. They go into the design of it, how they came up with the idea. A lot of real technical details, but man, this thing, if you're looking for a 3D printer, and I know you're looking for a 3D printer. Go to our show notes, to the Kickstarter link, buy this. It's only $180, it's happening, they're way over their goal, so he's gonna make them, so you're gonna get it. It's not like you're gonna back it, and he'll barely have met his goal, so they may not be able to do it. No, it's definitely happening. Or you can wait till after the Kickstarter is done, and it'll probably go up like $100. Now, now if you were to 3D print something, what would you make? I would 3D print... Man, that's a hard. It's four inches by five inches by five inches. I'd print a coaster for at work. And then I would print like a mouse pad. Because, you know, people still use mouse pads. No. Um, I, would, I would model up a dog and print that out and just have it chase Dixie around. I'd paint it like a wolf or something, put it on a stick. Would you make anything like this for your own collection? Um, yeah, once I get used to the hang of it, I might try to make some more stuff. I wouldn't really want to make any amiibo because the amiibo madness is plenty as it is. I don't need more amiibo, although I'm back in the game. Last week I know I was really frustrated, but I'm back in. Because apparently there's gonna be more Meta Knights released this summer. It's a rumor, but the rumors from the, the guy that reported this rumor has been pretty accurate with his other rumors. So they think that's gonna happen. So if you're looking for a Meta Knight still, be on the lookout at Best Buy. I think there's more coming. Also, if you haven't pre ordered Wave 4 yet, Amazon's should go up April 17th. At least that's when they're expected mm -hmm. to, but Amazon's not going to confirm because nobody really knows what the story is with Amiibo Wave 4 because Nintendo only just announced the release date for them. And I think that's because all the um, port strikes on the West Coast finally got all resolved. Mm -hmm. Good. And so now they know, okay, at least now if we ship them, they'll get there. Um once the backlog of all the shipping containers gets cleaned up. So I think that pushed the wave back into May instead of trying to release them in April. Mm -hmm. um, which is good for me because I really kind of just needed a break to like, okay, let's reevaluate this Amiibo situation. I'm back in. It was that quick. But there's more coming. I know I saw a Shulk on Amazon today for $30, which... Um, it's still twice, more than twice what they sell for, but that's the lowest I've seen one um, after being sold that um, since they released. Um, I saw Meta Knight for 35 which is pretty good, and I've seen them for $40. Um, Asia has a, I mean Japan specifically has a ton of extra Amiibo. But Amazon Japan won't ship to the U.S. No. <laughs> um, and I heard that Amazon France is going to stop shipping to the U.S. also for Amiibo specifically. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Apparently some Europeans were pretty upset that Americans were buying up all the Amiibo from overseas because we can't get enough of them here. Um, I'm going to just stay neutral on that matter because I kind of like a world market and I kind of have fun importing Amiibo, oddly enough. But, fair enough that they're mad that they can't buy them either, but then again, they had just as much opportunity to order them from Amazon France as we did. Yeah. 
And uh, they don't. They also didn't seem to have the same shortage problem that we did. I don't think as many people there were interested in buying them right out the gate either, though, until they realized, hey, these are kind of a big deal. It was too late then, though. We already bought a whole bunch of them. I did import a few from Amazon France, Amazon UK. I have one from Amazon Germany, I believe. Um, a lot of those are shutting down sales to Americans for Amiibo, though. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if that'll happen or not. Play Asia will still ship to the U.S., but they are all sold out of way for Amiibo. Um, if you want to get them from Amazon Japan, you have to like go through a forwarding service, which costs extra. Or you can just go to Amazon.com. Trust <coughs> me, there's a ton of Japanese importer selling stuff mm. on there straight to you from Japan on Amazon.com. Yes, it's more than the $12.99 price. Yes, you got to pay shipping in most cases. But it's still a better deal than any of the eBay scalpers or any of the Amazon scalpers mm. even for that matter. So you can still import them and after you import them it's about the same cost as importing it anyways. And you don't have to worry about this going to get stuck somewhere. So that's cool. That's not the story I had up. Fox renewed the last man on earth for season 2. Don't know where that came from. Nope. But cool. Did so you watch the last man on earth? No. Me neither. Did you watch Twi um, Twin Peaks? Did not. Okay, well that's coming back, but the original writer apparently left. Okay. Because he didn't think they were giving him enough money to do what he thought the show should be. So he said, peace. Twin Peaks is still happening, from what I've heard. Um, but in better news, the Daredevil Netflix series is looking like it's going to be sweet. Mm -hmm. I uh, heard some very good stuff about that. And so, did you watch the Daredevil movie with... I never had the opportunity. Mr. I need ben? To. I need to. Well, it was not good. Oh, yeah, I won't watch it. So, I mean, it, it was not... It was just, No, it wasn't good. I, don't, I would not watch it unless you just like watching bad movies. Can um, we do a bad movie Tuesday? A bad movie Tuesday. Or we bad can do movie. a bad movie Tuesday. We can do like a bad movie just watching bad movie one day. Um, but this Netflix series is shaping up to be the best and bloodiest show Marvel has made yet. It premieres also on April 10th, which is this Friday. And it's going to be on Netflix, so you can just watch it all. It's going to be dark and gritty. And Gotham. like Gotham. Like, um, think Batman Begins kind of style. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I've never been a big fan of Daredevil. But I'm excited to see these Netflix, these made-for-Netflix shows. Okay. So, I'm excited for it. I think I'm going to watch it. Take a look. I'll take a look. Chris, did you watch any movies this week? I have failed to watch anything yet. Again, this week, I've just been very busy. But I did have the opportunity to see Kentucky lose. What they lose? They lost the Final Four game to Wisconsin. Oh, that was still going on? Yeah. Oh, man, I just <clears throat> was watching wrestling. <laughs> that happened last week, and what we saw was Duke versus Wisconsin. Uh, and Duke Thanks. has taken the championship this year. The North Carolina ACC team has finally, oh, once again, I mean, again, again, has taken. This is the what the sixth one for Duke since the last one they won was in 2010. I know Probably. that, but they had a few more before that also. But they were pre 2000s, I believe. Yes, I, I honestly, I actually don't keep up with college sports. Mm -hmm. I just saw that because um, living in an ACC state. Uh, they're very heated about UNC and Duke yes. and uh, not liking each other. And so I just get to sit back and watch them all be ridiculous. That's what I do. Now, well, I get to enjoy wrestling. I would have liked to see Duke lose, um, but it didn't affect me either way as long as Kentucky. I actually lost. like Duke. They have a really good medical well, they school. They really do. They, really, they have a really great school, really good school. In but I also school. like UNC. They have a really good computer mm -hmm. science program. I college sports are just cool if you're into that, but I don't I don't get all the hate. Don't hate. I appreciate. I, I do like that. That being said, 
Duke won, so congratulations, congratulations Duke. all you Duke fans. Um, everyone else, you're probably going to just stop watching us forever now. But that's okay. You can come back next week, and uh, we won't be talking about Duke anymore. Probably ever, unless they win again, or their medical school does something awesome. As long as this podcast keeps going for another year. Oh, it'll definitely still be going another year. It may not still be us, but the podcast will live yes. on. Like Rachel might be doing it. Okay. She's shaking her head now. Welcome to the Weekly Flare, Rachel and Chris. That'd be cool. No. <laughs> Alright, Chris, so what do you got for us? Oh, man. We got a lot of... Let's see here. Da, 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 da. I got some would you rather. What would I rather? I don't know. I'm going to ask both of you these questions. Actually, the first one, while this is loading, I'm going to ask you this. Okay. Would you rather be only allowed to listen to Nickelback for the rest of your life... Or read the iTunes terms and conditions once a day. iTunes terms and conditions once a day. I agree. Concur. That was not even hard. Nickelback. What, wait, I had to listen to Nickelback every day. Yes, every like, day. Like on, like all day, or just like once through their discography. That's the only thing you can listen to. Like I can't even listen to people talk. No, only music. Only music. That well, you that's know. okay. I listen to podcasts most of the time, so I, I might take the Nickelback thing because I don't listen to music that much anymore. No, uh, no, no, no. Who am I kidding? Even if I had to listen to once, the one time I listen to music a day when I'm in the car would be too much. iTunes terms of service. I would definitely. Plus, by the time you would eventually memorize it and you could read through it like twice as fast. You'd learn to speed read. Yes. That has so many other benefits. You could learn legalese. I mean, then the next time you have to read a different terms of service, you could just fly through it. Let's see here. All right, what's next? Would you rather live in a house of your dreams, but it does not have internet access, or your current home for the rest of your life? Current home for the rest of my life. Why is that? Um, uh, internet. You need internet? I don't need internet, but I like internet. Well, and the home of my dreams doesn't not have internet, so... I couldn't have the home of my dreams without internet. Good answer. So, current home with internet. Okay. You can only hear one song for the rest of your life. Bohemian Rhapsody or Ring of Fire? <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody? Definitely. What? what kind of question was that? Ring of Fire? I'm, I'm just not, asking. I'm, just, I'm not going to make fun of Ring of Fire, <laughs> but... I would not want to listen to that on repeat for the rest of my life. Would you rather have a time machine that goes only back in time or a time machine that only goes forward in time? So I can't return them back to the no, present? No, no. Um, forward in time. Forward in time to see what's up in the future. Well, I figure if I go forward in time, someone else will make a time machine that will go backwards in time and I come back to the present. It doesn't say I can't buy a new time machine once I'm there. <laughs> Would you rather have a superpower to fly or become invisible? Um, fly. Would you rather have unlimited love or unlimited money? Well, love's not really quantifiable like that. So what do you mean by unlimited love? I guess, what, what, what would you rather have unlimited money or be hated by everybody? How about that? Let's put it that way. Uh, well, I, I'd rather not be hated by everybody, but I don't need unlimited money, so I'd have almost unlimited money and be loved by everybody. These are some terrible questions. I'm like Michael. I'd rather them be afraid of how much they love me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have horrible acne that is only on areas that are covered with clothing or moderate acne that only is on your face? I have mild acne on my face. It doesn't bother me, mm -hmm. so I guess that's fine. Would you rather cut off one of your fingers or pay five thousand dollars of your own money for the person you hate most to go to a <laughs> to go on a spa vacation? I would rather pay five thousand dollars <laughs> because I like my fingers. <laughs> okay. Would you rather never have internet access again or never be able to take on uh, take an airplane again? Um, no airplanes, thank you. Internet. Would you rather not receive any money from an anonymous source or receive $10 million worth of crack on your doorstep? <laughs> Would I rather not receive money? What? <laughs> These are absolutely awful. Would I rather not receive money <laughs> or receive a bunch of crack? I feel like those, 
those aren't like opposites. That's like, would you rather not receive money or would you rather go to jail? Like, I'm confused. So if I get the crack, I get a bunch of money? Yes, I guess. I, I guess I'd rather not receive free money because <laughs> what am I going to do with 10 million pounds of crack? Uh, would you rather be in a real version of The Walking Dead or Jurassic Park? Ooh. The Walking Dead. That's the Walking hard. Dead. I think I'm going to go with Jurassic Park because less people died. True. And Walking Dead, pretty much everyone, everyone was died. dead. I don't know if I want to live in a world where everyone's dead. <laughs> Although zombies, but dinosaurs. Oh, here's another Zombie one. dinosaurs? Yes, that would be legit. That's kind of what they were in Jurassic Park. Would you rather be famous author of, a tw of Twilight or famous writer of every Nickelback song? <laughs> um... I would rather be the writer of every Nickelback song. Okay. Because at least I could go on tours and uh, have fun. If I'm the writer of Twilight, I just go on like book signings and stuff. And I don't, I don't really, I'd rather be like playing or singing if I'm going to have to do something terrible. Hmm. Last one, because some of these are just awful. Would you rather be a va would you rather be a vampire or a wizard? Wizard. Wizard! I would love to be Gandalf. And then I'd see Crazy Eyes and he'd be like... <laughs> we watched Mr. Deeds last night. Oh my gosh. And uh, Crazy Eyes thought the mailman was a wizard because he was away with that. So you did watch a movie this week. I also watched Home, which is in theaters. It's by DreamWorks. It's an anime movie with Rihanna and J-Lo. And Jim Parsons, also known as Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. And his character was basically Sheldon, but as a an alien named that was a boob, which is a made-up alien. Uh, it was good. I really enjoyed DreamWorks movies. They're, they're very hit or miss. Like, there's Kung Fu Panda. And there's How to Train a Dragon. Great. Both great, movies. great movies. But there's also The Croods. What was that one? Yeah, The Croods. Oh, awful. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're very hit or miss with their movies. I thought Home was very enjoyable. Rachel thought it was adorable as all get out. She loved it. She wants to buy it. She's like, I'm going to go take my sister to see it. I'm going to take my mom to see it. I'm going to take my friend to see it. She's like, no, we need to buy it when it comes out. I'm going to watch it again. She's really excited about it. I enjoyed it. It was very enjoyable. We'll be adding um, a, a figurine. Rotten here. Tomatoes didn't like it, though. They only give it a 47. Rotten Tomatoes is hardy. If the critics don't like it, Rotten Tomatoes. They like a very specific... The people that are on Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> they all have the same exact opinion on movies, which is why they're all on Rotten Tomatoes. So, if you agree with all Rotten Tomatoes ratings, then you might want to pass on home. If you agree with, a, you know, two-thirds of their ratings, I'd probably go see home. If you don't agree with any of their ratings, well, I don't know what to tell you then, because maybe you'll be like 0%. Well, did you like Brave? I didn't see Brave. I don't want to. Didn't see it. I will see The Incredibles 2, though. Definitely. And yeah. Rachel's not invited, because she doesn't like The Incredibles. I guess we'll just go together, then. I'll go. Yeah. We'll go. We'll go. We'll but do a movie review. hate on Rachel's show. No, but it is the time to wrap up show. So, Chris. <laughs> yes. If we wanted to find you on Twitter. On Twitter? On Twitter. That is Never Lose Heart. And with our new animation, you can see it right here. We got the lower thirds going on. They're crazy. All right, and you can find me on Twitter at James Walter. You can also find Chris on Vine if you're into that Vine thing. Yeah, fight with heart down here. Is that underscores on Vine? No, no. It's straight up. Just spaces. straight. My Instagram, unfortunately. Why do your Instagram have underscores in it then? Uh, that was the only way I could do it. I couldn't put spaces in there. Oh, and I don't want to clump together. Gotcha, so let's gotcha. fight underscore with underscore heart. See gotcha. underscores. They're right. right. Somewhere over here. All right, and you cannot find me on any of those other services because I don't do those. But the Weekly Flare, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at the Weekly Flare. You can find us on YouTube, the Weekly Flare Podcast. You can find us on the internet at www.theweeklyflare.com. And yeah, we have a pretty cool website that is ever-growing and changing. And we're working on some other cool stuff. Give us a thumbs down. I mean, thumbs up Give down here. Give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up comments. down here. Go Comment. to iTunes. Review us. Rate us. Share on your Facebook. 
Um, I know last week I said I was trying to get this on Stitcher. That still hasn't happened okay. because it's kind of a pain, apparently. Uh, meaning, really, I just didn't sign up. And there's another service, Blueberry. If you're on Blueberry, let us know. I'm trying to add it on there also. That's what I used to use. So I think I'm going to work on that this week. And then we have some other stuff we're working on, too. Some top secret cool stuff. But uh, we're going to get going. Get on with the week. And we will see you guys again in seven days. Peace.